now let's look at oracle access manager architecture and i think focus on this the most important i think the an entire training i'll say it a couple of times but in my view if you understand this diagram it's quite clear and hopefully you will start understanding the or once you understand this mod this particular topic or this particular slide you're almost done with or you'll be clear with a lot of items so let's explain what this diagram look like so first of all look at this ldap and we covered this ldap in module one where we said oracle directory services in towards the end of the module one we looked at oracle directory services where we said users and groups are stored so that's what is ldap lightweight directory access protocol so you that's one component this is where the users and passwords are stored <clears throat> by default when you install oracle access manager oracle access manager gets deployed on top of weblogic server and weblogic server has an embedded ldap server uh, that's where the weblogic's username and passwords are stored and you can add more users and password in that however that LDAP embedded LDAP server is not scalable uh, for an enterprise solution. That's not an enterprise solution. That's good for test and dev environment. But by default, Oracle Access Manager validates or has an identity store or LDAP store configured as WebLogic's embedded LDAP server. So what we do? You can optionally change it to a another enterprise LDAP server like Oracle Unified Directory or Oracle Internet Directory and so on. So we have a dedicated module where we are going to change the Oracle Access Manager to the LDAP server or OID or OUD. So that's where Oracle Access Manager is going to validate the username and password. Then you have second component that's Oracle Database. And so when you install the Oracle Access Manager, Oracle Access Manager will have some its metadata and some configurations and policies and session information and a lot more auditing and a lot more will be will go into the database and we'll as i said we have a, another dedicated module where we're going to look at all these various stores in oracle access manager apart from identity store so when you configure oracle access manager it needs a database to store the policies and policies are nothing but as i said earlier a set of rules which dictates how a url is protected or public or various other rules those are defined in oracle database so you need a database and you're going to create a schema before you configure oracle access manager and this is what this database is for now this is the crux or this is the main oracle access manager heart of oracle access manager you have oracle access manager gets deployed on top of an application server called weblogic and weblogic has a feature called domain and also admin and manage servers as i said earlier we are going to have it next module is going to be about oracle fusion middleware weblogic and we are going to look at these domain and admin server and manage server so when you install what you get you get a or you configure a admin server and you configure a managed server or installer is going to create or configuration screen is going to configure it for you so you will get an admin server and a managed server admin server is basically where administrators or you or whosoever is managing these oracle access manager will go and define the policies or define the connections to the ldap server or define something called as webgate which we'll see here so all those configurations are done by something called as Oracle Access Manager console, which is a graphical user interface, or you can also do from a command line. We'll look into OM console in its dedicated module. So that particular admin server or that application called OM console gets deployed on the admin server and only used during the administration purpose. There are two other applications called WebLogic console and Enterprise Manager consoles also get deployed on admin server. The admin server listens on a specific port, which is by default 7001. So this admin server is used only during administration purpose, which means if admin server goes down, your Oracle access manager will continue to work. So that's one component.
called admin server. Then you have a second component which is represented here called OM server. This is a managed server which listens on port number 14,100 by default. You can change this port. This managed server also has a another port or another listener called 5575. It listens on 5575. You can't change that port during install, but you can do it later after installation. So there are two listeners, which is 5575 and 14,000. This is, as I, as I said earlier, front end channel, front end channel. And this is back end channel. And I'll explain the reason for that or these or I'll explain uh, the functionality or which one is used where in a minute. So so this is where the entire logic about single sign on session management, authentication, authorization, connecting to the LDAP server, connecting to the database, all those things happen at the time of runtime when user needs to log into the application. So this is the main key crux about this. Yep. Then you have another component, which is WebGate, which I said earlier is a policy enforcement point, which always sit with the web server. And WebGate talks to the Oracle Access Manager server on the backend channel, which is 5575, on a protocol called Oracle Access Protocol OAP, which is uh, Oracle's proprietary protocol, Oracle Access Protocol. Then you have the application that you're trying to protect via single sign. -in. It could be a, for example, OBA, it could be portal, it could be custom application, it could be OBA, anything. So that application or e-business suite, that application you're trying to protect, this is where it is. Optionally, you can put an agent for now, just forget about this. This is a thick client or another type of client, so you can ignore that for the time being for here. You can either have an OAM, WebGate here, or you can have a OEM agent here as well, but we are not going to cover that or hold hold that thought for a minute. You know? So this is the application that you're trying to protect. You configure web server in front of that, you put a WebGate. This reverse proxy is basically, as I said earlier, if user, this reverse proxy talks to the Oracle Access Manager through front end channel port, which I said is 14,100. So, uh, so these are various components in Oracle Access Manager architecture. There is a post process authentication process can happen again. This is a little bit more advanced. So I'll keep it towards end or we'll, we'll cover that in a minute later. So how does the flow happens? What does request happens? Let's assume we've all configured fine and you're protected. This, this application is configured with Oracle Access Manager and there is a web gate you have configured with web server and this is what you configure configuration you have so user will try to access application so this is the application user trying to log in user will never ever talk to the application server directly user will not talk to the application directly user will always configure or go via this because we have a firewall here and firewall will not let end user to connect directly to the application server so user will connect to the web server and say, hey, give me this application access. And that configuration happens. There is another module in web, web in Oracle HTTP server or the web servers called mod WL. Uh, if it's a WebLogic server, mod WL OHS. If it's a different application server, depending on the mod, depending on the application server, you have modules. So user try to access this application through the web server, but the web gate will kick in and say, hey, no, you need to first log in and WebGate will take this user to the Oracle Access Manager through the backend channel. Oracle Access Manager will connect to its database and say how the policies are protected or this URL is protected. Oracle Access Manager will then redirect user through the web server and say, here's the new URL and the user will get that page. So the same thing which I said earlier. So now user will get a login page with the user ID and password and hit submit. When submit button is configured to go to the OM reverse proxy. Again, when we are going to uh, when we are going to look at the consoles, I'm going to show you where this configuration is. Where when on submit, where does where, how does it knows that I need to pick it from there? That's defined in authentication policy. Also in Oracle Access Manager console, we'll we'll look into when we cover that consoles module. So user will type username and password, hit submit. It will go to the 
on submit it will go to this reverse proxy on http server and that will forward request through this http channel which is front end which is 14100 front end channel oracle access manager will collect that user id password and this time it's going to forward it to the ldap server now this configuration you are going to configure that oracle access manager and say to the ldap server during initial configuration so oracle access manager will take the user in password validate against the ldap server oracle access manager will create a session here cookies will be assigned and user will now go again to this application again with the authenticated user id and say hey now i've already authenticated here's the user id here's the url i want to connect and this time now webgate will say oh it, it's already authenticated allowed web server will then forward it to the application using that server web server or web server will forward the request to the application with an authenticated user id application will then can do further authorization within the application for that user id and assign or give access so this is all in a nutshell architecture let me cover components what all those components are so first of all you have what we call policy store or the metadata and this is this which is oracle access manager this is where the policies are stored this is users and groups which is this here which is this is where users and groups are stored this is where authenticated users who needs to log into oem should be present here then you have oracle access manager domain which is this part this part in the middle here so pdp means policy decision point this component which is managed server is the one which decides whether to allow or not allow access based on the policies which are defined in the database then you have web server which is basically front ending with the application that you want to protect it could be oracle http server it could be apache from open source this is iis from microsoft or it could be ibm http from or uh, from ibm and so on it could be any web server it doesn't need to be oracle web server only then you put a web gate in front of that which is called as policy enforcement point and the application or the resource which we want to protect so there's a resource there's a policy enforcement point there's a web server there's a policy decision point there's a ldap store and there's an oracle access manager db or database this is all in a nutshell about our oracle access manager architecture if you know this you're clear so this is this is the most important thing that you should know 